Mike Pringle. Yes, turning to um, the question of uh, proceeding, taking proceedings in the absence of the accused, um, <coughs> some people have said to us um, when they've been given an evidence that they're concerned about the fair representation of the accused at the trial. How would you answer that? Um, this, is, this is not something uh, new. We, we, we have uh, already um, addressed that issue, um, you know, to some extent in, 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 in Bonamy. But I think ultimately, and it's the same argument that, that, that pertained when we were discussing uh, the, the concept in Bonamy, that it's, it's ultimately a matter for the judge to be satisfied whether it's in the interest of justice for any trial uh, to proceed. Um, the judge has to be satisfied that the accused knows the date and place of the diet. Um, and, and the court could take uh, a balanced decision. And, and, and it's not something that doesn't happen elsewhere. It, it does happen in other jurisdictions and, and happens uh, well. It's ECHR compliant. Um, and I think that there could be cases um, where it would be in, in everyone's interest to, to have the matter uh, expedited. And I, I think that there could also be examples of where people actually uh, use their absence to avoid uh, justice being determined. But the, 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 I repeat the point I made earlier, it then comes back down to the judge to make that determination whether it's in the interest of justice. I mean, clearly the evidence we've had from various people is that I mean, when, for example, when we lift, visited the Lithgow Sheriff Court and others, um, people thought that this would be used very seldom. Um, and uh, I can understand what um, Hugh is saying in relation to um, a case where you have three or four accused and they take it in turn not to turn up. So they, they literally take it in turn not to turn up. Um, so that delays it four times. And I, I can understand why you might want to do it. But I think you, you, you talk about in your um, policy memorandum in 2002, 2003, over 4,000, and I quote, over 4,000 hearings resulted in a warrant being issued for the accused as a result of their failure to attend. So isn't that the much wider problem? And how are we going to address that problem? Yes, I, I, I think there are, there are two separate issues. Um, we, we need to ensure, uh, and some of the things we discussed earlier on, uh, were about um, people knowing when uh, a trial was fixed, not having uh, any doubt uh, introduced. And Wilma Dixon gave some examples of some of the pilots that we're, attempt, we're trialling to, to ensure that people know exactly when they're, they're due to appear in court. But notwithstanding the volume, and, and we do need to try to, to minimise that where possible, um, if it appears to the judge that a trial can safely uh, go ahead and it's in the interest of justice, then we believe it, it's right to uh, allow that to happen. Mike Pringle has given uh, some examples of how the system can be used uh, by people to avoid um, a determination uh, in a case, and I'm sure uh, that, that there, would be, there would be other examples. But uh, the, as I said, the, the, the system, what we are proposing is ECHR compliant. It is used in, in other uh, jurisdictions. Um, and, and the penalty for failure to appear is also uh, increased by the bill. So, you know, it, 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 in one respect, we also need to, to remember that, that, that there could be an increased penalty for, for non-appearance. Sorry, I think. Yeah. Uh, certainly, I would agree uh, uh, with you, Henry. The uh, I've prosecuted several trials in absence. It's not new. We have it for road traffic matters in Dumfries Sheriff Court. So it's, it's been there for, for a long time. It, the change here is that it widens the group of cases in, in which it can apply. Uh, and it, I think what its significance is, it's part of the motivation for accused to turn up. Uh, that it's a, a deterrent that experienced defence solicitors like Mr McCaffrey will be saying to their client when they're released uh, the pleading diet, now, here's the date you have to turn up. You better turn up on this occasion, because if you don't turn up, the trial will go ahead and you're not going to be there. That, that's quite an important factor, because if they wish to contest solely what's been said by the police or by the civilian witnesses in the case, they will have another motivating factor to do with the fact that if they're not there, it, the show might just go ahead without them. And clearly it will be a matter for the judge to determine whether or not a fair trial can take place in the circumstances. If identification is a major issue, then clearly it would not be a, a circumstance in which we would be able to, to, to go to trial in absence. So there will be common sense uh, running throughout this. I think it's, again, 
another useful part of the armoury of trying to motivate individuals to turn up and to comply with the system rather than to cock and snoot at it. And the example that you gave is a classic situation where you do have accused taking turns uh, and not turning up for the trial, and you have victims and witnesses utterly traumatised by that, the fact that they have to turn up and they do so religiously only to find that, uh, that they have been mocked by the behaviour uh, of the accused in these circumstances. So uh, even when I mentioned the, the chaotic lifestyles of drug addicts, drug addicts can turn up for their methadone, they know when to, to, to uh, uh, appear for important appointments and they can order their lives. What we've got to do is ensure that they're motivated by this range of provisions in this bill to ensure that they do take seriously uh, appearance before the court, and I think this is a useful part of that armory. It's not a panacea, certainly, and it's not something which will be subject to widespread use. But in England and Wales, 15% of trials before the magistrates' court take place in absence of the accused. 15%. Anyone else on that point? Okay. Marlon Glenn. Um, 